Hello and uh, welcome to the first video in a mini series about uh, managing campaigns. Um, so we've got a start screen for our fantasy grounds here and we're going to uh, create a new campaign by uh, hitting the uh, create campaign button. Um, so we're first of all going to give the campaign a name and I'm going to call this one play and then I'm going to put in a hyphen. I'm going to add in the rule set that I'm using and then I'm going to uh, give the name of the campaign itself uh, and I'm going to be playing the uh, Lost Mine of Fandelver so therefore I'm giving it the Fandelver uh, name. I'm then going to select my uh, rule set that I want to use, 5th edition in this case, and then down here I want to have a look at what extensions I might be wanting to uh, use in this particular uh, campaign. Uh, so I like the official theme so I'm going to select that. Uh, and I like to replace the GM token, so I'm going to select that. So this is where you would select your um, extensions uh, if you uh, are going to be using any extensions. If you're new to Fantasy Grounds, I'd recommend that you don't use uh, extensions, uh, at least initially. Um, the other extension that I might uh, look at here is the official uh, languages fonts, uh, brackets FR, which is Forgotten Realms. So since we're in the Forgotten Realms, uh, maybe we'll have that one as well. Uh, if you mouse over any of these, if the, the uh, sometimes it goes over the uh, edge here, but if you mouse over them, uh, it'll give you the full uh, title of the extension. Um, so that's us. Uh, we would set up cloud, public, land, private, all that kind of thing. I'd suggest cloud and public. You can give it a password if you uh, want, but that's not wholly necessary. Um, uh, and this, this, these, th this would be the easiest uh, combination for your players to be able to join your campaign and to find you uh, on the uh, uh, lobby list. So uh, let's start. So uh, when the campaign uh, loads up, um, you're faced with this screen here. Uh, we'll see in the chat window that it tells us uh, what extensions we've uh, loaded up. Uh, it tells us the copyright information and it also tells us the uh, version of the rule sets that uh, we're using uh, as well. Uh, that can be important information uh, if you ever get errors or anything like that. Sometimes you'll be asked for what is the uh, version of the rule set that you're using. Um, but here we've got the uh, campaign uh, setup window. Um, and uh, the first page here is uh, going to give you uh, links to user guides and to uh, the forums. And if this is the first time that you've fired up uh, Fantasy Grounds, this is a good place again to uh, go into here and uh, learn a bit more uh, about how Fantasy Grounds actually works. Um, we then can click the next button. Uh, and here uh, we can load up uh, various uh, modules. Uh, that we might want to use in our campaign. Uh, so we've got a variety of things here. If we click on the modules button, then it takes us to the module activation screen. Uh, or we can uh, load up the 5e core rule books. Uh, we can load up all the 5e rules, uh, basic rules or SRD. Now you don't need all of these. You don't need the SRD and the core rules. You don't need the 5e rules and the basic rules. Um, uh, you, you pick pick one uh, essentially um, and it, it, th that will load uh, a number of books. Obviously it depends on what modules you have purchased. If you haven't purchased any of the uh, core rule books, the, that's the Player's Handbook, Monster Manual and Dungeon Master Guide, then obviously uh, that won't load up so you'll be using the SRD or the basic rules which come free with uh, Unity. Um, the all rules will load up uh, all three core rule books and also uh, they'll load up any other books that you have like uh, Monsters of the Multiverse or uh, Modern Kynans, Tome of Foes or Volo's Guide, Van Richten's, all that kind of stuff will all be uh, loaded up for you. Now, I, if, again, if this is the first time that you're using Fantasy Grounds, um, then I, I would suggest that you don't actually use this at all uh, to uh, load anything up. And in fact, if you're um, an experienced user as well, again, I really wouldn't uh, recommend that you load up a ton of modules uh, into your uh, campaign. Th there's no need for a, a ton of modules to be open. Um, however, 
the option is there should you uh, want to. Um, and then we can click the next button here and this takes us to the options. If we can click on that, then it takes us to the options thing. I will look at this uh, screen a wee bit later on. Uh, if you do not want this window to pop up every time you open your campaign, then untick the show on load box and then we can finish. If you ever want to get back to this, you can go into uh, the options here and you can go back to setup and it'll take you back to this uh, screen here if you uh, want. So now that we've got our uh, campaign uh, up and uh, running, um, we then need to decide what, uh, how, we're, how our campaign is going to look, what the feel of the campaign is going to look, what options we're going to set, and uh, what uh, modules we need to uh, have available. So let's go to the library and then modules and then activation. And the first thing that you want to consider is what books do you want to share with your players for this campaign? What books are they going to be uh, have available to them in order to create their characters? Uh, so if we go to the share filter here at the bottom uh, and this will show you all of the modules which you have which are shared uh, by default or which you have designated as being shared and as you can see here I mean I've got six pages of them this is because I've got a whole uh, ton of stuff and clearly uh, I I don't really need, the players don't really need six pages worth of material to create their character. And I mean, if just a brief look through here shows that the uh, SRD data is shared as are the basic rules are shared. And I've got the player's handbook, so neither of these books are, are books that I want to share with the players. That's just going to confuse things. So I'm going to go through this. And I'm just going to click on these green uh, buttons here. And as you can see, as I click on the green buttons, uh, th they disappear because they are now being removed from the uh, shared libraries. And so therefore the players aren't going to uh, see these uh, when they go into their module activation screen. So uh, prune this, uh, depending on what you have. Of course, you may only have a couple of books, in which case uh, you're quite happy for everything to be shared. But if you've got a ton of stuff, uh, then I would uh, seriously prune how much you're actually sharing uh, with your uh, players. Uh, so now I'm going to consider what books do I want uh, as uh, the DM. So I'm going to uh, click on this until the share filter button shows share filter. Obviously we're going to need the Lost Minds of Fandelva uh, since we're going to be playing that. So I'm just going to uh, search for that and then click on this uh, and it will uh, open the uh, module. And I probably want the player's handbook as well. So um, let me uh, search for that too. Uh, and we're going to open that. So that's all the modules that I'm going to uh, uh, open up initially. I don't need to have tons and tons of modules. Um, I may, of course, need more modules uh, later on. But these are the only modules that I'm going to really need uh, for the moment. And before I look at any of this, I'm then going to start thinking about what options I want to set for the uh, campaign. Now, there's a bunch of these, and I'm not going to go through them all because otherwise the video would be hours long. Um, and so what you want to do is just go through these and decide on what the uh, options that you want to set. Um, there's a, a detailed uh, wiki entry which gives you all of these, and it will show you in detail what uh, uh, you want to set, what options you want to set, how you want to uh, play your game. Uh, also in options here, if we put this to the side a little bit, also in options here you can see that there are various other buttons down here. Um, for example, the uh, background uh, decal. And if we click on this, this is going to open up um, all the uh, decals that you have uh, in your uh, assets. And these will be from uh, any uh, books where there are uh, decals or anything like that. Uh, and you can expand this. You can see there's various pages of it. There's a, a next page uh, button and then there's a previous page button once we click on the next one. Um, and it shows you the, all the decals that you have. And uh, you can just uh, pick one uh, and it will automatically uh, put this into the uh, 
background for you. Uh, and this is something that you uh, can do. You can put any image actually on the background, but this is what you can do from uh, the background decals. Um, you've also got the message of the day, which I think is really, really useful. Um, here you can uh, type in a uh, text. Uh, uh, and this will, the place will pop up when your players join your um, uh, game. And it, uh, you can summarize the previous uh, play. You can put any kind of messages in here you like. Um, you can e add links here. I mean, for example, supposing the players had already got a couple of quests, uh, you could uh, link uh, these quests into here so that the players can see it. Uh, and maybe um, you also have uh, some maps. So you can find one quickly. Um, but uh, to uh, there's Cragmore Castle, so maybe the players are playing in the Cragmore Castle map. Uh, so you can uh, just uh, shove that over here and link that. And when the message of the players join your uh, campaign, message of the day pops up, and they can just simply click on uh, these links here to see uh, what the uh, quests are, what the images are, and etc. etc. Um, so. Uh, the message of the day I, I find uh, extremely helpful um, and you should certainly uh, use it. All sorts of different things you can use the message of the day for. Um, you can also set up currencies here. If we click on this, you can see that uh, the currencies are set to the default uh, five E ones, platinum pieces, gold pieces, etc. Um, it shows the value uh, of the uh, currency and it also gives a weight. You can add your own currencies here or you can edit these uh, if you like, um, and you can give everything a weight and a value and whatever, and uh, that can be used uh, within your game as well. Um, you've also got languages here, uh, if we have a look at that. And remember, we set up the, uh, we uh, added in the Forgotten Realms uh, languages extension. So if we wanted a uh, common to be shown uh, as, I don't know, primordial or something like that, uh, then when we select common from the drop down menu here and uh, we type something in, then uh, it's, uh, it's shown in that uh, font and shown in that language. And you'll also get a little message here, provided you've got players actually joined to your game. It'll show you here uh, what players actually understood uh, that language. Uh, so you can play about with that and have different fonts for different languages. Uh, via this uh, languages button here. Um, and you've also got uh, token lights here where you can set up your own uh, token lights. Um, I, I've got a video somewhere which uh, covers this in, in more detail. So these are all your options uh, and that's the next thing that you want to do once you have started your campaign. Uh, okay, I think that's enough uh, for the introduction to this uh, mini-series. Uh, we'll see you in the next one where we'll talk about uh, actually preparing for your uh, first session, etc. So thanks for watching. Cheers for now.